Chester, yesterday's horse. Get away, son. I'll sing you the story of a friend of mine named Chester. He was a giant, the likes of very few. Chester was a workhorse, his job was skidding timber. There wasn't anything he'd rather do. Just a horse and his boy in a land of rippling waters, strolling through the river in the magic morning sun. A cold drink of water and the pleasures of a friendship. Then it's back to business on the run. <laughs> and when the work was over, he would frolic in the meadow. When the work was over, he would frolic in the meadow. Trip the not so light, fantastic in a matter all his own. And everywhere Chester went, his friend was sure to follow. Except for times he chose to go alone. And there were times he chose to go alone. Mm -hmm. Now Oregon in summer is a garden of Eden. Every boy and girl, Adam and Eve. The beauty of the wilderness is seen in panorama. There are sights you wouldn't quite believe. The bigness of it all you can't believe. <laughs> so lovely, so graceful, sheer poetry in motion. The wonder of it all you can't believe. I don't think you were built to be a jumping horse, Chester. But it's sure fun doing it. Ben? Do you know what time you'll be home for dinner? Hope to be home by six. Okay. Bye, Mom. Bye, hon. Bye. Thank you. It was the time of year when my son Sliver and his horse Chester were to report to the logging site in the North Woods. We were looking forward to the start of the season's logging operations. There were mighty few big Belgian draft horses left in this country, and we never had trouble finding a job, especially the way young Sliver could work with Chester. And it wasn't just the 2,200 pounds of horsepower that earned Chester his oats. He had the heart and stamina to match the big country in which he worked. And the foreman of the Bohemia Lumber Company, Russ Benson, knew it. Howdy, Ben. Sliver. How are you, Russ? I'm afraid I got some bad news for you, Ben. Doesn't look like we'll be needing Chester on this operation. Well, Russ, you know this gelding can outpull any draft horse in the county. I know that, Ben. Look, you guys tie up your horse and come with me. I want to show you something. Ben, we've got something that's revolutionizing the logging business. It's a monster filled with helium. I still don't understand. What's this got to do with my horse? 
Lutz just replaced your horse, Ben. I'm going to show you and Sliver how the space age has come to the lumber industry. That balloon is a thousand times more powerful than any horse. It's over 10 stories high and over 100 feet in diameter. It'll soon be up in the air and working. I'd like to take you and Sliver up in the chopper so you can get a better view. Fine. Wow. how neatly the balloon does its work. It can log out whole sections and we don't even have to build roads. It makes the business of logging a lot more efficient. We don't kill the ceilings and we can log in pretty rough country. there is a diesel-powered yarder. It's the heart of the whole operation. Now our man Charlie maneuvers the balloon by winding over over half a mile of cable through those big drums. He can bring the timber right down to the logging trucks. We can lift 25,000 pounds of timber like jack straws. Charlie has mastered those controls so that he can put those logs just about any place he wants them. They're branded. And then they're lifted by that steel-jawed monster onto the logging trucks. <laughs> it's your beast the horse, Ben. Yes, sir, it was hard to take. But Sliver and I could see the advantages of the new system. Even a great horse like Chester was no match for helium and hydraulic muscles. But it was Sliver I really felt sorry for. Looked like the end of the road for Chester. He had truly become yesterday's horse in the business of logging. Thanks for the ride. Hope you understand, Ben. It's a tough cut to swallow. But we can't hold back progress, even if we have to replace the logging horse. No hard feelings? No hard feelings. Let's go, son. Take it easy, Ben. You too, Sliver. Sorry, Chester. Chester, yesterday's horse. Come on, come on, Chester. In a world of tomorrow, he is out of place. In a time when rocket ships go sailing through space, who needs a yesterday horse? Chester, what can you do that can't be done better by a new machine? In a little car world, you're a big limousine. 
That's a yesterday horse. The bigger, the better. You were a go-getter. Now they don't need your get up and go. Once they cheer to see you do your stuff. Now they fear you're not good enough. But I'm here to say it ain't so. Mm -hmm.
Okay, Charlie, take it away. What horse? Air freight. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's like we saved the horse, but the, we may have to shoot the driver. <laughs> uh, how bad is it, Ben? Oh, it's just my ankle. I'm okay. It's a little house, Chester. I think he's all right, Dad. Well, take him back to the farm, and we'll pick up the wagon tomorrow. Well, you take it easy, Ben. That battle truck's on its way down here, and it's got a stretcher in it. Things were looking pretty glum with me in a wheelchair and Chester unemployed. Our savings just wouldn't stretch to feed a pet that weighed a ton and ate a bale of hay for lunch. I was trying to figure a way to break the news to Sliver about the upcoming horse auction when some mighty weird things started happening around the ranch. To this? But, Dad, you don't understand. I'm training him. For what? To win $300 at the horse pulling contest at the Albany Timber Carnival. Well, that would buy a lot of hay, Ben. $300 would feed Chester all winter, Dad. We wouldn't have to sell him. Yeah, providing you win the contest. All right. Go on with your training. Why would you please do me one favor? Do your practicing on the tree trunks up on the north pasture and leave the barn standing? Sure, Dad. I'll even clean up this mess for you. <laughs> Thanks. During the final days of training, Sliver really put Chester to work. Stump pulling gave the big horse extra wind and added muscle. It was a good thing the training was over while the farmhouse and barn was still standing. 
And even Sliver didn't know what good shape Chester was in till time to load him for the trip to Albany. Okay, Chester. Attaboy. Just step right in here. You gotta get in all the way, Chester. be better? He's just not gonna fit, Dad. I know, son. I made other arrangements to get him to Albany. Other arrangements? Yeah. All aboard for the Timber Carnival, giddy up! the galloping goose and she runs through the woods and carries oregon spruce and pine and people past the village green prettiest train you ever want to ride on as she glides along the woodland trails hear the rhythm and the melody rails and wheels are singing such a happy song prettiest train you ever want to ride on words can't describe the beauty of bohemian mountain greenery you better watch out you'll fall in love something about the scenery so get on board, we'll take a little ride, find a place and settle back beside someone you care for. Let the world go by, prettiest train you ever want to ride on. Ain't it gonna be wonderful, what a day for a festival. Ain't it gonna be wonderful, going to the timber carnival. Ooh. The Timber Carnival at Albany, Oregon is the largest celebration honoring the logging industry. The carnival draws lumbermen from as far away as Canada, New Zealand, and Australia. The highlight was the draft horse pulling contest. But before Chester's event, we got a chance to see the lumbermen in action.
gentlemen, here are the contestants for one of the highlights of the Tampa Carnival, the pulling contest. The rules were fairly simple. The horses were going to pull a weighted sled for a distance of 15 feet. 100-pound sandbags will be added after each go-round until the contestant fails to move the load the distance of the chain marker. If the horse box, he is given 10 seconds time to continue the pull. If he fails, he is disqualified. The winner will be the horse that can pull the top weight the measured distance. From the look of the competition, it was going to be a tough contest. There was the defending champ, a black percher in Conqueror, owned and driven by Harry Tuttle. For the single horse championship, here is the first entry. Go on! Hang on! Push her! Go ahead! The field consisted of seven horses, all strong and experienced. The beginning weight was easy, but when they started to add the 100-pound sacks, the load began to take its toll. Ten, disqualified. Paul! Time went on, and the champion hadn't even strained yet. He made it look easy. But Chester and Sliver were right behind him. I don't know if the grueling event was harder on Sliver or on Chester, but it was a terrible strain on Barbara and me. Now the load was being increased to a top weight. Conqueror and Harry Tuttle seemed to be ready for it. Sacks. A lot of weight there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Disqualified. And now, after all the horses have competed, there are only two left in the finals. They are Conqueror, driven by Harry Tuttle, and Chester, driven by Sliver Kincaid. The load has reached the 3,200 pound mark. Both horses are tied. Conqueror will pull first. Are you ready? Go, ha, ha, go, ha, go. The champ completes the pull. Chester complete their go round. And it's still a tie. Okay, Bill. Five more. That's a heavy load. How much is on there, Ben? About 3,500 pounds. Kincaid and Chester, position, please. It's been said you don't send a boy to do a man's work. But we'll see. Becca, back. Back. OK, Chester, this time you got to do it. Easy, boy. 
boy. You can do it, Sliver. Good luck, son. Go! Driven by Sliver Kincaid. Oh, look at you come here. Oh, I'm oh, not We haven't added a traction this year. The Albany Tractor Company is making a special offer to introduce their new model. They are offering $300 to the winner of the pulling contest if he can outpull their tractor in a free for all tug of war. Ben Kincaid. Do you and your boy accept the challenge? Wait a minute. Son, what do you think? What do you think, Chester? You know, that tractor has a lot more horsepower than Chester. We could use an extra 300 bucks. Let's try. OK, son. We accept the challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Kincaid and his son, Sliver, have accepted the challenge. has won. Sorry, Chester. I guess I misjudged. I really thought Chester could do it. Can we go home now, Dad? We can go home. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get around here now. Here's a little beauty that just pulled a champion draft horse right out of his horseshoes. This beauty can now be yours. Pictured, if you will, in your own ranch. Well, get rid of that old hay burner out the lawn and sell your fish for it. The approach of fall started turning the leaves in the high country. Preparing for winter, Chester and Sliver skidded logs for firewood. Also preparing for winter, the loggers picked up their pace to get the timber out before winter closed the roads. Down on the new logging road. Says the creek's washed out for a spell at the bottom. 
Maybe I better take a load down and check it out. Right. I'll hold the fort down. All right. Hey, let me know if you need a cat. for your coordinates. side about five miles north of the Kincaid Ranch. Contact Commander Copters. We've got a fire. Hamlet's is on the way. I've got your coordinates and will inform Commander Firefighters. Keep us posted on that fire. Roger. I see the ambulance coming in now. are scrambled. They better hurry.
Seems too rough to land. I see Sliver and Chester heading that way. If the fire whips up, they could be in trouble. Roger. I'll pass the word. Thank you, Sliver. Hey, Sliver. How about you and Chester coming back to work for me tomorrow, huh? Mr. Vincent? You boys give me a ride home. Hey, Sliver. This looks like a much more comfortable ride. <laughs> Ranger Station. Rescue is accomplished. Fire under control. You've done your work for today, Sliver. There's a cat on the way. We'll yank it out. But thanks! Chester, I'm still your friend. It's a mean old world that would pass you by. 
Soon there won't be time for the 4th of July. But I'm glad there's still a yesterday horse.